Hey, what's up, Emergent? Glad you're here and uh, get to introduce you to one of my favorites, David Sherry. David, so glad you could be here, man. Chris, thank you uh, so much for having me. It's an honor. Sweet. Um, so when we thought about the Emergent experience and one of the key pieces that's so important when you're starting out as a young professional is being able to not lose yourself in that, staying authentic and keeping it real. Um, that there's such a battle for that. And so for you guys to know why I have David here to talk about that is because uh, David built and is building brands that show up in an impactful but authentic way. There's nothing cheesy or gross, forced or hype. It's, it's true, it's beautiful, it's pure. I've seen him build uh, email lists and write to people that are far away all over the world and they develop this close connection. Um, so maybe David, you wanna tell us a little bit about like uh, your experience and, and how you're here, uh, just as a way of introducing yourself a little bit more and then I'll kick us off with the first question. Sure. Yeah. So today uh, I do a lot of different things um, with early stage companies, uh, typically remote companies, almost as like a brand coach sort of brand guide. So I help, I help businesses with their content marketing. Uh, I help them with their brand strategy. I help them with their processes. I help them with their sort of selection of tools and, and outsourcing and hiring. Um, so I do a variety of things for other businesses right now. Um, but before that, I had started a company right out of college uh, called Death of the Stock Photo. And uh, it's a bootstrap business. It's a subscription service for stock media, photo, video, stock media. And we sell the agencies, uh, big, big companies, freelancers, et cetera. So um, I feel like today I do like a wide range of things. A lot of my initial experience and growth came from, I think, that early phase of building that company. Like how do you build an audience from scratch? How do you build a newsletter? Um, how do you sort of attract, you know, a community and so I think there's a lot of lessons kind of in that early phase that now I'm helping other businesses with today. And uh, yeah, it's, it's super fun. I'm also a coach via site shift. Uh, and yeah, so, um, and, and today I also help manage another online community called Jacuzzi Club, which is uh, a community for brand builders, basically. So um, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of things going on. That's awesome, man. J Jacuzzi Club is where I learn about the cool stuff from you. David's like got a future heart mind. He's out there. He can get think of it. And so he guides me even in that. Um, well, as you look at what you do, how, how you've learned to pay attention to what comes out of you as a creative uh, leader, what do you think is the main paradox or, or maybe there's multiple paradox tension points in being authentic in your work? Yeah, I think there's multiple, um, but I, I think at the root of creating quote unquote authentic work, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that I don't think anyone's, I don't think anybody's born to be authentically a certain way. I think we all develop that over the course of our life and what is authentic to us changes at every stage of our lives. Um, and I think that's something worth paying attention to because it can be sort of this guidance system, you know, your intuition about that can be a guidance system for sort of how you spend your time and, and how you show up in your work. Uh, but I think the main sort of paradox that comes to mind as you ask me that question is really, should I trust my own creative ideas and intuition for what I think should be produced in the world, what I think I should create, or should I follow the existing systems, processes, patterns, and templates that have been laid out, you know, before me. And I think where people tend to get stuck is they start with the how, so a lot of times uh, they, they really, people really want to jump into, you know, okay, so tell me how to build this email list. Tell me how to build up on social media. Tell me how to run this podcast, how to start a podcast. And what I constantly have to back creators, founders, artists, uh, back, take them back a step to is what is it that you think should be in the world? What, from your perspective, from your world and like life experience, how do you think a podcast should be? Should it be a three hour podcast like Joe Rogan? Should it be a five minute podcast like, you know, another one? Should it be, uh, you know, deep and emotional or should it be very informational? There's all these decisions that go into any creative idea, whether it's a business or a project or a book. And what I find is people tend to not trust their own creative sort of intuition and their own insight. We all actually have a ton of life experience. And if you're listening to this podcast, you have a massive amount of life experiences and you also have a, a a perspective on the world that you can put into your work that is going to connect with other people. And so I think the toughest thing for people is to pause and actually listen to, to say, 
if I was to create a TV show, how would I do that? If I was to create a podcast, how would David, you know, Chris, how would you actually create that? Not what else is out there in the market, you know, not what is the five steps for creating a great podcast? What's the perspective that you have? And if you start with that as your target, I think you avoid a lot of pitfalls uh, that, that can happen to people who, who don't. Yeah, yeah. What's been a place for you that you were, you feel like you avoided a pitfall? You were lucky to do it. You're like, man, I'm so glad I, I, I did that. Anything come to mind? I think anytime I start down the road on a project that just feels like I'm working more and more and getting less and less of a result, I think that's what tends to be the feeling that sort of shows up if you're working from that place. You're trying really hard. And I actually think that's an interesting thing to even talk about or discuss. I, I don't like the idea of trying at all, if that makes sense. Like trying is like spinning your wheels. Trying is looking for solutions sort of outside of you. And this happens to me all the time, right? So I think in really small ways, maybe I'm trying to craft this email to sort of manipulate somebody to respond to me in a certain way or to like to sell to them or something like that. And I find that sometimes the more that I'm working to sort of manipulate that script, let's say, uh, the worse the outcome is. And, and so what I try to do is shift, you know, so in a small example of that would be like, I'm just writing an email and I realize, wow, I'm spending like a lot of time really trying to position myself and how they see me, or I'm trying to like manipulate how they receive this. Uh, and I'm, I'm spending all this effort. I'm Googling the five tips for sending a you know, email to someone you want to be your mentor or whatever. And like all of that just actually kind of like junks up the process and is wasted effort instead of like taking a second to breathe. It's like, what do I actually want? Oh, I just want this person to like recommend this one thing. I send them a really quick note. Hey, you're, you're a baller at this stuff. What's, what's the one book you'd, you know, send me. And like, it just is so much more natural to function in that way. And I find the results are better. So that happens in small ways. You know, if I'm sending an email to somebody or I'm on a phone call and it happens in big ways, I'm, I'm three months into working on building this company that isn't even something that I'm wanting to do anymore. And it, it got off the rails, you know? Yeah. It's so fun to think about uh, all the times I've not fun, sad and fun. I got to laugh or I'd lose my mind. The times I've tried so hard. And I remember being like 25 and leading uh, too many leaders for, for my age. And uh, I, I was processing with two of the team members how I was going to share this news to this group of like 70 people. And, and I was trying to like manipulate the perfect message. And I remember one of the guys, he was like, why don't you just be authentic? And, and it hit me like, you can do that? You should do, what? And it was so liberating uh, versus the trying so hard. What would you say to somebody that, that might be listening to this that's in an environment where you know, it's, it's a bigger company and there's a lot of trying hard and they're trying to, yeah. to keep who they are in the middle of that? It's incredibly liberating. Uh, I, I think it's exactly what you said is right. It's incredibly liberating to, uh, it, to surface a, a desire that you actually have or to voice something that you actually see instead of like keeping it sort of contained. And I think the tough thing is not everybody in your organization might hear it sort of the way, you know, that, that you're seeing it. They might not see it for themselves because they're kind of blocked up in their own ways and, um, and, you know, in the organization. And so I guess the first thing is if you can sort of notice yourself, where are you covering up how you actually feel about something? Uh, where are you sort of keeping information like locked in about how you sort of see this project should develop or, or an area of the business that could be different or better instead of sort of just, you know, letting it uh, continue as is and thinking as long as I keep my head down, you know, things will maybe work themselves out. I, I don't think that things ever really do work themselves out. What we can do instead is we can kind of create this like positive sort of pivot moment. And I think what you were just describing in your example is, a moment where you can shift from why am I sort of uh, putting on this front or this mask or why am I trying to sort of um, appear in a certain way to other people when actually I feel a different way. And so I, I think those moments, if you can catch yourself at a time where you feel like you're sort of um, yeah, not voicing a concern uh, or, or not you know, speaking up about something or not taking, seeing an opportunity that you'd actually think would be beneficial for everybody, um, if you can actually use that moment as a time to sort of remove 
the mask of how you want to be perceived and actually just speak up, uh, I think that people tend to receive that really well. And uh, most people have probably heard of, or many people have probably heard of Brene Brown, who is a vulnerability researcher and speaker, a TED speaker. You can go check out some of her talks uh, online on YouTube. And I think the th thing about vulnerability is it's actually, it's very similar to authenticity, in my opinion. Uh, and maybe they're almost like kind of one and the same. And so when you can just share where you're at without trying to manipulate somebody, without, uh, you know, without trying to appear a certain way, I think people tend to put their guard down and feel like, oh, you're actually just being real with me here. So I think there's a lot of moments where we can flip into that type of uh, mindset or, or release some type of that information and do it in a very authentic or vulnerable way, which is another way of saying doing it in a way that's actually natural instead of covering up the unnatural way of just holding in this information or saying you feel great when you don't or whatever that might be. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. It's you, you get sick holding it in, you know, and we know that, but we forget it so often. Uh, totally don't want to do anything, but, but uh, make you feel loved and accepted here, but just to help us grow. Is there anything right now that's hard for you to, to kind of accept reality on or be vulnerable with as you think about business or leadership or, or wherever that takes you right now? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so I think right now there's so much uncertainty in, you know, the, the world I think right now. And not only when you're at the early stage of building companies or you're starting a company, or even if you're just building a project or, you know, doing a new initiative in, in your company, there's always going to be this sort of uncertainty factor, but I think that's just magnified right now. And so I think collectively myself included, I have a little bit of this ominous feeling of things, the circumstances in the world might be worse in three months. And I think that's probably something a lot of people can relate with as, as well. And where I get trapped is when I feel like I'm powerless against those circumstances and that my actions don't have any impact on what that's going to look like. So sometimes I forget that yes, circumstances might and probably very well will be different in three months. But I, I forget my own power in that situation that kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, I can create something new from scratch. So yes, there's going to be circumstances that are maybe good or bad or whatever they are three months from now. And I think when I'm not showing up how I'd like to be, I feel powerless against that. And I feel like I'm going to sink into whatever circumstances are created. And, and I have no voice at that table. I have no power in that situation. When the reality is, and this is, I think the point I was trying to get at earlier is, you can always just create something completely new from scratch, even outside of any of those circumstances. The creative process, making something new, building something for the first time is, is completely separate you know, from whatever the circumstances are today. You can use some of those circumstances as leverage for building uh, and as sort of context for building in. But you know, I think most of the creative process is really about creating something from nothing. And I think we have always have that ability and, you know, Steve Jobs has the quote about, I forget the beginning of it, but basically like you'd be surprised, you know, that when you create something, you can actually make a dent in the world. And he was surprised at the reaction that the world had to something that he made. And I forget that. I forget that I still have my own agency three months from now. And what I do uh, has, has an impact as well. Mm, mm. What an awesome reminder, I think, for everybody that would be watching or listening to this, that no matter the circumstances, you still have agency and exercising your agency impacts others. There's a, there's a, you know, residual impact that reverberates through our communities when we take that, that authentic action. Um, even in the midst of the crisis, man, thank you. That's so helpful. What for you right now, if you were to, uh, and, and this wasn't even in my mind to, to ask, but it, but it is now it's popping in there. If you had like, you know, a billion dollars, no crisis, and you're like, I'm just going to go make this thing. Is there anything like that that you've been kind of cooking around with that uh, is occupying your, your curiosity? That is a great question. I wish I had a more clear answer come to mind. Uh, I'll, I'll list out a few things that I think are really interesting right now and just the shifts that are happening. Uh, I think the first is 
we're going to see a massive shift to online education and, and um, just learning from other people, whether it's on YouTube or in courses or through coaching. Uh, and I think it's just going to be such a massive wave of people learning from each other directly and people having all different types of teachers and mentors. And that's a really exciting opportunity that I, I plan to work on myself. Uh, but I also think if I had, you know, the, the billion dollar fund or whatever, I would be looking for ways to sort of maximize interpersonal learning we're very used to this sort of hierarchy structure of like the teacher at the top and you know, we're sort of at the bottom. And I think what's happening with the internet is, you know, more networked learning. And so with Jacuzzi Club, for example, you know, it's all these brand owners in a conversation together, discussing hardships, discussing, you know, things they're seeing in business, discussing tools that they can maybe apply. And that the network, the power of the network is, is amazing. And I think that's a, a resource that people don't always realize they have. Maybe you feel like you're just one individual you know, among the many, but you can tap into these networks and suddenly it's not just maybe the leader of that network that you can learn from, but your peers. And so, yeah, that's, that's one opportunity that I, I find, uh, I find really interesting and I think it's already happening. And the last thing I'll say about that is I'm noticing personally more and more, uh, if you look at something like Google, uh, which is like a search, you know, based company, it used to be, you always go to Google, Google, you know, where can I find the best burger or whatever? Google, you know, where, where, what class should I take? And more and more, or I suppose less and less, I'm going to Google for those answers. And instead of going to my network. So now I'm going to the Jacuzzi Club, you know, Slack group and saying, hey, I'm looking for the best burger in this city, you know, whatever. What should I go check out? And that to me is a hint at that shift that I'm talking about is uh, these, these networks I think are so powerful. So I, I think, uh, I'm seeing that kind of emerge as a really valuable resource for people that maybe they don't understand um, are totally there. And uh, yeah, I think I could probably say a lot more about that, but I'll, I'll pause if there's any other uh, you know, direction you want to take that in. But that, that would be one opportunity set that I think people aren't totally seeing yet that is to me almost like the magic of the time that we're living in. It's like yeah. so incredible. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it makes me think a little bit of your story um, and I hope I'm not saying too much, but just like the permission you were getting when you were like in high school, seeing things on the internet to know you're not alone, but what you've done so effectively that I hope people can, can take from the contour of what you're sharing in your story is you, you've translated that permission into community, building community around you. And then what you're describing there, allowing that community to to help you, to serve you. Um, I think the word we could use sometimes is leverage, leveraging that community, but that almost sounds transactional. It's such a give and a take rhythm. Uh, what right now for you in, in experiencing authentic community, uh, what right now for you is really lifting or encouraging you or inspiring you? I mean, I hear the Jacuzzi Club and the Slack, that's really yeah. cool. Anything specific come to mind? Yeah, I think, uh, well, and thank you for you know what you just shared. And I think although the word I, I agree has a connotation, I think like the leverage is incredible. And I think people, yeah. I still don't know if people understand how much power they have. Like if you look at, and I'll get to maybe some examples in the jacuzzi, for example, but if you look at, let's say Twitter it is a free resource that individual people with no budget are getting millions of impressions, you know, on, on what they're sharing. Yeah. And I think you know, I, I love, uh, and I'm blanking her last name right now, but Greta, um, the uh, climate, you know, activist. Thornburg. Uh, Thornburg. Can I, tell, yeah. can I tell you a joke on that real quick? Please. Yeah, yeah Will please. Will I throw you off? No, not at all. Not at all. When my daughters, so I have three daughters, 15, or no, holy cow, 14, 16, 17, and David knows this. When they stand there with the fridge open and they're all passionate about the climate, as a total dad joke, I'm like, Greta's angry at you. <laughs> Yeah. And so think <laughs> about that impact. You know, I don't know how old she is now. She's what, 16 or yeah. something. And it's like, think about the, the global impact that Crazy. that one individual has had, not with a massive media budget, you know, not yeah. with, you know, everything from the old world that was necessary to prop up, you know, that type of conversation. She has dented the world, you know, and yeah. whether you agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. The opportunity is there for you to sort of dent the world. And that means if you can do that individually, the communal version of that can be even more powerful, right? So what, what does it look like to have a few people in that sort of Greta space all pushing that conversation forward? And then, you know, thousands of miles away, 
you know, some teen girl sees the fridge open and is yelling that like that is the impact of that individual. And I think, you know, it's hard for me to always remember that that opportunity is just absolutely incredible. And, you know, what I've seen happen, I think that's, that's really fun for me as some more specific examples. Uh, so one thing that happened very quickly when sort of all of the COVID-19 stuff started in the jacuzzi, in the jacuzzi was, uh, some channels started popping up that were specifically related to that. So do people want to share highs and lows going on? Do people want to share information? What resources are available? So sort of like opening up a new channel of discussion on a topic very quickly uh, as an outlet for people for honestly getting very helpful information, sometimes even like from a health perspective. So that was a, a small thing that can happen very quickly in a dynamic community is you can kind of open up resources and access and information on a topic that's necessary. Another thing that I see happen more and more frequently now is the sort of serendipitous connection that can happen will lead to new projects, right? So uh, I love when I see people post, hey, through meeting this person in this group, now we decided to make this site together and like, here's the finished product. And you're seeing, you know, people sort of connect and build companies together, build projects together, you know, meet a co-founder or whatever it is. And, and that's something I think that's like a cool opportunity as well. And, and maybe people don't always remember that serendipity can be just this amazing force forcing function for your career, right? Like mm. how many times do you hear on a podcast, someone saying like, yeah, what was your break in your career? And it, it always is some, you know, serendipitous moment. It changed the trajectory for them. And so uh, I, I remember, I remember hearing, I think it was um, and his last name is so hard to say, Chamath Palapatia uh, say this, that amazing. That yeah. Yeah, that, awesome. <laughs> yeah. That, that luck that the function of luck is about creating as big of a surface area as possible for yourself to catch that luck. And so the hard work is just growing your surface area so that more lucky things can maybe lightning can kind of strike on your surface essentially is what he's saying. And I think that's really true is that we forget that there's, there's a lot of serendipity that can come into our lives and change our trajectory if we're open to being aware of it. And also if we're doing the hard work of expanding our, you know, surface area, expanding our, uh, sort of set of opportunities to catch that luck, to catch that lightning. Mm. I, I mean, what a, I mean, it's almost like there's a rhythm and a progression to this that you are, are finding the permission to be who you are. You're venturing out, you're establishing these connections. And as you establish these connections, this surface area increases for lightning to strike. Why not be honest then? Why not take that authentic path no matter where you are? And, uh, Thank you, man. What an, what an example for us to follow, be encouraged by. Um, dude, what a gift to have you on today and sharing um, your future brain and your past experiences and how all those come together. Uh, David, thanks. What a gift. And if people were to want to check you out online, where would you like for them to go? Uh, what would you like them to look up? Yeah, I think just go to davidsherry.me. It's S-H-E-R-R-Y.me. Uh, that's my website. You can you know, find a bunch of projects and stuff like that on there. I'm most active on Twitter. Uh, and I can send you that link to link it up in the you know, show notes or whatever. But uh, yeah, both those places will be a good place to find me. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, buddy. You guys go check his stuff out. Be inspired because he will help guide you. And uh, we're so glad you're here. Peace. Thanks so much.